All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Excess Exceed. This is Gearface. Uh, uh, incredibly excited today to talk about maybe one of the least talked about characters in Exceed. It's Caden. And to do that, I have maybe the the bravest guest I've ever had on. Uh, this is this is Swordplay. Swordplay, thank you so much for being here. Uh, yeah, uh, it's good to be here. I am here to play Caden's advocate. Uh, I'm, is Caden, I'm so excited. Is Caden the greatest? Uh, hard to say. I'm here to say uh, he's probably not the worst. <laughs> he's probably not the worst. All right, so that's the baseline that we're starting from here. For people who are brand new to Exceed and who don't know what we're talking about here, this is a character that, you know, if you got into the game back in uh, or over in Guilty Gear, all the way up here over in season one this is what we're talking about so this is an old character you might not be familiar with him but if you are familiar with him what you're probably familiar with is that he's kind of a meme um several uh experts people whose opinions i really really trust on exceed um have told me that they don't really know what to do with Caden. um so i want to really extend a thank you up front to swordplay for being willing to uh to uh fill in a really important gap uh in maybe just like the community's knowledge of this game i don't think anybody knows what to do with this guy so i think a lot of people will be very excited to learn <laughs> what to do with caden so thank you so much for being here swordplay all righty um quick disclaimers before we get started number one we tend to talk about playing to win on this show i'm going to pause myself right there and say that uh playing to win with caden not an oxymoron but this is a character that's rotated out of competitive play uh so if you are playing caden to win it's either in like a casual competitive format at your dinner table or it's in a legacy tournament um in which case you know uh we might be talking about him in terms of a metagame that you do, that he's not a part of. So Swordplay is mostly probably going to be talking about, you know, how Caden worked back in the Red Horizon 7th Cross days. But maybe we can extrapolate some of that stuff to a more modern metagame if, we're, if we can theorycraft a little bit. Um, but that said, if uh, the, the lines of play that we're describing don't sound fun to you, don't play that way. Uh, Exceed is fun. You should be playing it for fun. Uh, number two uh typically we're pretty prescriptive about strategy here just for brevity's sake you you might hear swordplay say things like um always do this never do this this is always the right way to do this this is always how you should evaluate this um even with a character this sort of uh enshrined in the meta which is another way to say old uh yeah. exceeds not a solved game you're not um uh you know we aren't saying that is the only way to play this character, you might have a different line of play. If you do, I would love to hear from you because I, I don't know anybody who has another line of Caden play. But um, uh, don't think that because we're saying this that you shouldn't take it with a grain of salt. I'm not an expert at all. Even Swordplay, who is an expert, uh, his opinion is just an informed one. Uh, so develop your own lines of play. Tell us why we're wrong about Caden. Um, but yeah, all that said, uh, Swordplay, tell me a little bit about Caden. I am all yours all righty uh well uh we'll start off with his uh ability which is the uh it, it is it is the most well i'd say tied with most important aspect of caden okay uh his front side is just when caden uses an ex attack uh he draws a card the this is when he sets an ex attack um uh so i got the time that the strike is is set before you turn face up uh, the front side effect, not the important part with Caden. If you can manage to play some EX attacks before you exceed, uh, it can be helpful. Okay. Uh, however, uh, Caden definitely is is one of the characters that wants to e exceed uh, as soon as possible, as his exceed side is the same effect. Uh, however, his EX attacks also have an additional plus two power, in addition to the plus one an EX would normally have. Okay, so so this this EX cross that I just put down as an example is hitting for six at speed seven. Ooh. Correct. Okay, that's, yeah, that's that's a lot. And I'm noticing it as we're looking at this ability, uses the NEX deck, that's, this isn't on, this isn't specifying offense or defense, so I could put this down on defense, draw a card, and and get all of my stuff. So this is, this is uh, not limited to just my turn or anything like that. Correct. Okay. 
uh, as well as uh, on the topic of defense as well. Uh, not only is he able to hit pretty hard, especially with an attack like Cross that's pretty fast, uh, it also means that because he wants to EX attacks, uh, don't forget about that one EX armor. Uh, makes him trade just a little bit better than it looks at first glance. Okay. So uh, and, and EX attacks are already strong. And having correct. and you know leveraging EX attacks at the right point in a game can can win you or lose you the game. That they are they're a very very strong resource to use. He just has better ones. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so is my game plan as Caden basically just to hit with EX attacks, or or uh, how do I how do I turn this this ability into into a plan? I guess. Well, uh, there's a, a multiple details to that. First of all, as he wants to exceed as soon as possible, uh, unless you're exceptionally lucky, uh, the odds that you're going to have just a, a lot of EX attacks just waiting for you, uh, you have to have both cards. Uh, Caden is not able to artificially EX attacks, uh, such as like Remless is able to do. Uh, sure. He has to EX the old-fashioned way. He needs both cards to do it. Or if you're, if you're used to a more modern season... Uh, there is nothing, to my knowledge, in in all of season one, there is nothing like badass or superior, where Correct. where you Except can you can fake an ex outside of certain characters. Correct. Okay, so he's uh, coming by him honest. Right, uh, which means that he needs to. Well, I don't know about honest either, uh, but <laughs> he, he does he does need to he needs to get both cards. Uh, the trade off there, uh, of course, he gives a lot of information to his opponent. Uh, okay. Because every card, every individual card that he has in his discard or in his gauge uh, is noteworthy, as it, it's not a exable option uh, right. because he can't artificially do it. Uh, so he needs to pay attention to which cards he has gotten rid of as well, uh, because you're not threatening your ex assault anymore if one of your assaults is in your discard. Right, and and ex assault in particular, like like just just to like ex attacks are strong if you are if you are not used to. Uh exceed you know brand new to exceed ex attacks everything has plus one every status plus one that is That's variable rich. variably useful but always quite awesome if you take ex assault for example and give this plus three power this is an above curve option that stuns sweep at range three that and gains advantage that's actually crazy um because this is hit, this is hitting for seven with caden's character ability correct Correct. Uh, okay. In addition to him being able to draw a card when he sets it. Right. Okay. So, so the the card draw I should basically be treating as like a um just kind of a bonus on top. Like like if I can get it, this is my real character ability on exceed side. Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, the 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 power is very important for the rest of his attacks in general. Uh, uh, more so than the normals. It, it obviously it's very good on the normals. Uh, however, for the rest of his kit in particular, the the power boost is very very important. Okay. Um, as we get into the kit, how how do I put, how do I put this question? So, C Caden's ability is conditional, right? Obviously, you need to be in exceed mode to use it, which might which might not be easy. I don't know about his gauge generation or anything like that, or other gauge outlets. We can talk about that. But obviously, I won't always have this plus two power because I'm not always going to be playing an ex attack. Um, right. So, so as we go through this kit. We should also probably evaluate them, you know, in their worst case when you're just playing them raw, but also, you know, talk about what they do when you EX them. Um, and I I don't, as you said, I don't really have the ability to play EX attacks more frequently as Caden. So as we're evaluating this kit, how like how important is it that I have the EX attacks? Like, am I not a character at all if I don't have them or it, am I just like? Am I still able to do threatening things if I don't have an EX copy of a given card? Uh, it is it is very difficult to be threatening as Caden with his special specifically. Uh, he has uh, a fairly reliable one in the form of uh, Chain Strike. Here yep. Yep. is uh, it is an outlier in compared to the rest of them. It is even a non EX version uh, as it is a four to six. Uh, it's only got one power, but that's just enough to stun. Right. Uh, with a speed seven at that range, and it can pull. It doesn't. It doesn't pull four. It, it might look like that at first glance. It pulls up to four. You can right. choose to not pull at all if you wanted to, and it gains advantage for good measure. Right. That's actually, so. It is that's, a. That's a lot actually. That's really good. It is a. It is a potent threat uh, to most all characters, as 
uh, at that distance, typically a lot of attacks that even the guarded ranged attacks, uh, if they don't hit at one and you manage to hit them at four, you can just pull them to range one. And so you, you have a lot of flexibility with it. It's a very easy to confirm. It gains advantage. Uh, most importantly, it is just that uh, very fast gauge, and it's a, uh, available at turn one at uh, starting spaces. Okay, so th this is just my my opening. This is like this doesn't even in most games this doesn't even have to be a mix up. This is just like I can play this turn one and kind of get most of what I want out of it. Right, and it, it's just it's a very potent threat even on even on defense. Uh, you notably the advantage is better on your own turn, but uh, there right. are other characters who have uh, threatening turn one options that this can make a, a lot less safe. Right. Sure, that makes sense. Okay, so so as and and yeah, we can probably you know transition into the kit now and talk about what Caden's actually doing with these cards. But I need EX attacks in order to get mostly anything done with the cards we're going to be talking about for the next little bit here. Right, uh, Caden's oh. Caden's kit overall does tend to be uh, when they're not EX options, they tend to be subpar options. When EX, they are scary. Caden is able to hit very hard. Okay. So, so I'm, I might not win too many strikes, but the strikes I win, I'm going to win crushingly, and that's how I'm going to make up my difference, it sounds like. Uh, correct. Uh, a, okay. very, a very Akuma kind of mindset. Gotcha. All right, sure. Uh, you, yeah, you're, you're not, you're not going to be, um, you're not going to be striking super hard without investment, right? You're not probably not going to be throwing too many of these as just like filler offense, because they're probably just, they might just lose. But when correct. you decide uh, to invest, you win hard. Yes, uh, it, he still has some mix-ups. Just because he exes an attack doesn't mean he's just going to win that strike. Uh, but he has many, many options, and there are there are mix-ups available. Okay, sounds good. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Go uh, ahead. The 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 one exception he has, uh, as far as uh, like cards that he might play, just uh, as non exed. Um, there was the obvious, or the one I mentioned before, chain strike. Um, and then there is havoc call here. Uh, okay. It is not a great option, but the the note with it is that it is still a on curve option at range three, uh, just to get that gauge early because he wants to exceed as soon as possible. Uh, so this is another option he might choose to play, uh, not really expecting to win the strike, as this is essentially just a worse assault. It's just uh, worse. It's just worse assault at the range you'd be trying to hit with it, right? <laughs> correct. Um, uh, okay. Okay. So so. If if the plan is to to get gauge, I have a great gauge generator uh, opening play here. I've got a uh, at least on curve option here uh, that doesn't need an ex to do what I need it to do in that moment. Um, and then I got my normals. It looks like. Uh, yep, and that is that is pretty much uh, how you want to do it. These uh, the other three specials he has uh, generally. You don't want to play them when they're not ex. Uh, Calamity Bell here is is a a maybe. The other two almost definitely not. You you don't want to play them when they're not ex. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's get into it then. So we we already talked a little bit about Chain Strike. Um, this is is an outlier among uh among Cadence Kid. But honestly, like this is my I think like fifty fifth recording something like that. I would put this this card up there with like really really good characters kits. Chain Strike seems very strong. Um, uh, it definitely is. Is it okay? So so th this is something that kind of like any character might kill to have. They don't really make range four speed seven options anymore. Um, am I ever using this outside of uh, you know like I this is just something I can kind of throw out whenever I'm at range four or greater. It seems like. Uh, generally speaking, yes. Uh, okay. th there are some certain characters you might have uh, trouble with, this particularly with like speed traps um, mm. or, or like range dodges. Uh, but generally, generally speaking, it is it is always just a potent threat, um, uh, especially in in most uh, let's say default kits, because um, a lot of fast options aren't going to be speed seven fast. Uh, right. And then if they're like a guarded ranged attack, then you can pull them in. And if they tried to play like a guarded uh, like something like sweep, you just choose not to pull them. It's very right. versatile. Right. It's, it, it, it is. It, it's hard to to defend against. This probably just wins, but when it wins, it wins for one. Correct. 
Well, one in a gauge, which matters. Um, right, that, that's the important detail. Gotcha, okay. Uh, would I ever EX this, or is having both copies of it too valuable? Uh, I. It is one of the only three options I, I would not generally EX. Um, one of the obvious one being block. Uh, block you can sure. EX block, but yeah. Right. Uh, focus is also, it tends to be... Uh, it has it has its moments where you might want to ex it, but generally having an additional focus or or being able to use it for reading is is also very valuable. Right. Everything okay. else everything else is certainly uh, an exable option. Chain strike even uh, as an ex to chain strike and hit for four at speed eight. Uh, yeah, that's that's not bad and gains advantage afterward. Like you know, if if you are dealing with somebody who has a huge speed boost in play, hitting at speed eight is not is not horrible. But that that. That situation needs to present itself before you'd consider it, it sounds like. You're normally playing Chain Strike as just an attack. Generally, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, even even if even if you don't want to play it as an attack, uh, Chain Strike is one of those kinds of cards that you might just want to hold on to just so that your opponent has to question if it's available or not. Sure. Okay, yeah. So if I'm ever at range 4 to 6, this probably, you know, deals with... It, it's actually kind of analogous to... um to spike or a range one command grab in some ways where it's like if my opponent knows that this is in my deck somewhere they're a little bit afraid to initiate with the thing that this beats but what this beats is almost everything right <laughs> okay so that's that that is a very very strong threat to hold over my opponent's head that's that's good to know um would you rather talk about a card and its boost together or should we just move through the attacks and come back to the boosts later uh, in Caden's case, I think it'd be better to go with the attacks and then the boosts. Uh, his sure. boosts are not are not uh, very integral, except in certain circumstances. But that's what we'll come back to. Okay, sounds good. Um, all right, so and we we also talked a little bit about Havoc Call. Um, just on curve gets you gauge. Awesome, that all sounds great. Uh, anything else about this card? Uh, I'm seeing it's got a range dodge rider on it. Right, uh, and it does uh, initially look like a. Uh, Kind of a question mark as uh, attacks at range four plus don't hit you, but uh, this attack notably does not hit at four. So uh, the range that it dodges at is a range that it doesn't hit at. Right. Uh, that's actually a, uh, I'm not sure about common, but not an uncommon sight in season one. There are many attack shapes that are almost exactly the same as this. Right. Uh, it is, uh, this is the one time I think I'll, I'll, I'll mention another boost. Uh, uh, like beforehand, there is a boost over here on double charge executioner called chain extension, plus zero to two range. Uh, so that is the the method that Caden can use havoc call uh, and still be able to hit in the range that it dodges at uh, four or five. Okay. Um. Is, and and so and obviously even without that, I mean, if my opponent, if my I've got our uh, our training dummy down here in case we need to set up you know ranges to show off certain effects or something. But if I've got Ryu at range five and he just he just threw down a, a metsu hadoken you would be okay to dodge that even if you weren't hitting but you right. but caden caden does have a way to to make this uh kind of a, a mid to long range attack that actually can dodge while hitting right uh right. and it is also uh even having this dodge option uh it is a kind of another example uh or another option he has available uh because there's also Chain strike. So even in the example of like the Metsu Hadoken. Uh, oh sure. Ryu has multiple things he has to worry about in that instance. Right. Interesting. Okay. So and, and yeah, and that that actually it speaks to how it speaks to how strong chain strike is. That I just was like, oh man, I had this incredible idea. Oh, but oh, chain strike just does it. Just chain strike does what? Chain strike does the cool thing that this card does anyway. Right. Okay. Um, all right, so so we're getting this, we're getting using this to get gauge. We're using it to dodge attacks at, at range. It might synergize well with uh, chain extension to to make that uh, actually viable to do both at once. Am I exing this, or is this is this more of a a poke to get gauge? Uh, it depends. Uh, typically with Caden, uh, because you want to get that gauge as soon as possible to exceed as soon as possible. Uh, generally, this is one of the easier options to confirm. Um, and as again. Uh, previously stated with Caden, once you've played one of them, uh, when you find the other one later, uh, being able to EX it, there's a couple things you'll have to do to be able to have that option again. Right. Um, so typically, uh, I almost always tend to reshuffle with Caden. Um, 
usually very shortly after being able to exceed because you want options to be open again. Oh, okay. Uh, so when you if you can play it to get the gauge initially, and then later you would you would want to ex uh, ex it if possible. It is a very potent uh, attack ex. That is a uh, a one to three with six power at six speed with an armor to boot. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's like there's ultras that have that stat line. That's um, that's that's like a two or three gauge ultra for some characters. That's that's very very strong. Okay, and it draws you a card. Um. So that's so if 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 I'll have it in the late game, e exit. But I'm right. probably spending it to get to that late game state anyway. That that is uh, how have it call typically tends to work. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Um, sure. Let's do. We want to move right on to calamity bell. Uh, let's do so. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. So one to two, three, three, five hit push the opponent three spaces so you mentioned that this was another card that actually like is an attack it's not completely unusable as a as a non-ex attack i'm seeing this this at you know at range uh one or two this dodges sweep right okay uh provided it, provided you're not in a situation where you can't push sweep far enough but yeah right okay um and and is that kind of what the use case is is that this is just just kind of like a, a low damage mid speed uh, that is generally the case. Uh, it is the the anti sweep option that he has uh, as far as non exable options. Uh, it, it this is a if you were going to want to strike with a non ex attack, um, it it works as a, uh, a a threatening option to make sweep not necessarily a safe option. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so so I I put down a, a single card at range one and my opponent without this card my opponent could go oh this is just a free sweep uh awesome this card makes that not uh viable this actually gives me a mix up into my opponent's sweep when i'm not exing something correct okay that makes sense um and then in, and then when you do put power on it so now now we've got a now we've got a donkey kick that pushes uh three basically so right. you, you, you've got a, a four speed, six power, very safe, but maybe not like overwhelmingly powerful option, but still just like it just hits hard and and does its job. Uh, yeah, si six power will be a, a regular, uh, a regular damage point for Caden. Uh, six power is, is it ends up becoming his his default uh, after he's able to exceed and can uh, reliably EX. OK. Um, and, and because these are, are both safe shapes anyway, and now they're just safe shapes that hit for six and are even safer in the in the process. Right. OK, makes sense. Um, uh, the, the main ones that are important to speak of with uh, Calamity Bell are these these next two. OK. Uh, why Calamity Bell is uh, is an important ha to have in the kit, because the other two make it more it makes it better by comparison. OK. Um, yeah, I, I have actually heard of, I've heard tell of Fusion Bane. Um, <laughs> this, this card has a reputation. So yeah, tell me a little bit about, about Fusion Bane. Uh, well, two to three, so notably does not hit at one. Uh, yep. six power, which is, uh, six power is impressive. Only one speed, no armor, and four guard. Uh, yeah. It does, have, it does have hit, push the opponent one. After, pick up the top three cards of your deck, draw one, and discard the rest. So... At first glance, it looks like a kind of sweep, uh, and it also has hit push one, so you might think, oh, well, if I can hit a sweep at range one, I'll win against the sweep, but you're only speed one you're only speed with one. no armor and only four guards, so you're not, you will you're not get hit anything. by the sweep, and right. you will get destroyed by the sweep. Right. Is there... Does this lose to every normal? Uh... Almost. I guess. It, uh, I guess it it trades evenly into focus. No, it doesn't. Not at range one. If they. <laughs> okay. What? So right, what, what? What does this beat then? Uh, this essentially beats nothing on its own. Uh, this is this is the. Uh, this is it, as I as I mentioned before. Both of these next attacks are. You do not want to play this when it is not ex without something uh, else on top of it. Right. Correct. You could you could boost. Uh. Uh. Say. Uh, light or defend into it and it makes it it makes it better uh right. however just being able to ex it gets you what you're looking for anyway right that then uh, it's the, then it's it's six defenses and nine damage which is which is i would i would do that that's pretty good 
Right. Uh, assuming you're in exceed mode. Uh, right. it, yes. I'd say this one is even, uh, it, obviously it's better in exceed mode, but it is, it's worth considering playing it ex uh, even not in exceed mode. Uh, okay. it's, it is able to on offense, it is able to break sweep, uh, and on defense, it's able to take the hit from sweep and still, uh, retaliate and still, and still hit back. So it, it's still, it's still actually a viable thing, even without that bonus to power. Um, what is the, uh, the utility of the after effect? Uh, it is, it makes it so, uh, well, uh, hopefully you're not playing at a range one, uh, in, in the case of an unfortunate wild swing that can happen. Sure. Um, but, uh, uh, it does mean that if your opponent crosses away from you, uh, or assaults into you and you can't hit them at range one at that point, you'd still get the after effect as long as you weren't stunned with it. Right. Uh, which is, it's noteworthy. It's not, it, it's still not worth playing just to try to get that after effect generally right, the other right. one the next one might be this one is not but it's just it makes whiffing a little bit less painful okay and and what what you're using this for i assume is just to, is just to try to find an ex this is this is some of your card draw that you are are using to try to put attacks together right okay Makes sense. Uh, the, the the note there with being able to because you're looking you're you're getting three three cards deeper and uh, of course that's all concealed information uh, aside from the ones that you have to discard of course. Right. Okay. So so you are you are taking something into your hand. O odds are odds are odds are higher at least that that you are getting an ex attack from that card draw than they would be if you didn't hit with this. So like, like it's it's an upside there. But not so important that you would spend a turn fusion baning at range or something in order to to make that happen, right? Uh, okay. Especially not on offense. However, uh, as Caden does want to ex a lot, uh, sometimes of course you'll end up being in a, in a position where your opponent is striking you from a distance and you have to play something. Uh, and so if you were going to end up throwing a card from your hand because you have to respond with something, uh, right. this might be one that you would want to respond with uh, as. One, if you didn't want to play it anyway uh, without an EX version, uh, then it was a card you were already questioning throwing for a different card anyway. Uh, right. And you have a possibility of being able to get a, a, a card draw, but it's like a, a slightly better card draw. Right. Sure. Okay. That'll make sense. Um, and then how about uh, Double Charge Executioner? Also one speed, I'm noticing. Yep. Also six power. And and another no guard and or another no armor and only five guards. So this similarly will also get crushed by sweep. Right. Th this this uh, kind of this kind of also lose like this loses to a fair number of things. Not everything. It it at least deals with um assault. Right. Uh, so it can also and, it can also and, handle uh, like dive at range four. Although if your opponent dives at range four, uh, it was a gutsy right. move into chain strike. Right. They're they're already scared of that. Okay. But but it sounds like I'm playing this for the after as well. Oh wow. Return yeah, card from your discard to your hand. Okay, cool. This after can be worth it. Uh, it, it this one getting well, well, we'll go into uh, for one it, again the the no armor and only five guard. Um, uh, after you may return a card from your discard to your hand, uh, which is obviously very important for a character like Caden who needs both copies of a card to be able to exceed with or ex with it. Right. So I, I boost. I boosted something early in the game. I boosted light because light is a great boost. I got the other copy of sweep now. Uh, hitting for nine power sweep sounds like everything I want in life. I just need that other sweep. Oh, I can get it now. Right. Okay. Um, but is that I do I I need a reason like that to be playing this card, it seems like. I, I shouldn't just throw this out to get anything out of my discard pile. Uh, not generally. Uh, this one is, uh, if you have the option to EX with this one, uh, generally it is a safe bet to do so. Uh, even even not in, uh, in exceed mode is preferable, as that means you're not even afraid of focus because nine power. Right. Uh, uh, but even, even uh, not exceeded, uh, seven power is you're not afraid of sweep if you initiate it because you're also speed two. Uh, right. they, could, right. they could theoretically uh, EX sweep in response to you, but you still don't even lose to that. Right. Uh, so... It, it is it is a very safe option. You are pretty much only concerned about grasp and cross specifically. Right. Uh, however, even if they do grasp and cross you, uh, you have that after effect, which is uh, very good. Um, uh, and then there's there, there's more to go in with that, uh, as well as just because you exit an attack, you got to draw a card up front anyway. 
Right. Okay. Um, the The question that I'm about to ask does not imply that I am advocating for this as a as an actual decision, unless it's cool, in which case I definitely did it on purpose. Uh, but um, ex timing is such that I would play my double chain strike uh, as an ex. Do, uh, sorry, double charge executioner as a as an ex attack. Then during validation one copy would go to discard. Should I then get the other copy back? Uh, right, because it would okay. it would go after uh, it would go at the time that the cards were revealed. So by the time the after effect is is occurring, uh, okay. you are able to to grab the other one. Okay. Again, not saying you should. I guess unless you really really need chain extension, which seems like a pretty solid boost. I like plus two range, but uh, if you are if you are playing an ex stack, that is the timing that they go into the discard pile. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Other ahead. than that, uh, other than that, with these two attacks, uh, they are both very heavy hitters. They're just very high risk. Um, and the the noteworthy thing is that because both of these in their non ex forms both lose to sweep, uh, uh, that is what makes the Calamity Bell an important factor in the kit because uh, the, the the opponent must consider if that is the case, because that's the, the definitive anti-sweep option that he has. Sure, right. And like, like in, addition, the, in addition to, of course, Spike, but that's spike, not available to rank one. Spike, sure. So, and, and this, this actually is a, a, a thing that deals with sweep at, at range one. Like, of course, the, the, non-charitable, uh, the non-charitable read on Caden is that he has two cards that are so bad that they make Calamity Bell useful. But it I, is, uh... like, if 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 I didn't have like I would like to be able to hit for nine nine occasionally or for seven on on front side with with a fusion bane having something that enables those options on defense or or anything to make those slightly more confirmable is nice. But it seems like these even when you're exceeded even when you're doing everything to confirm them they're they're kind of hard to hit. Right. Okay. Uh, and this is where we get to uh, all of this together with just his specials. Uh, it is, it you, you, it would it it'd be easy to say that Caden is uh, just terrible with just looking at this. Yes. Uh, the the next things are with the ultras. Uh, one of which is uh, I mentioned before that Caden's exceed mode is about half of what makes Caden Caden, uh, and then one of his ultras is the other half of what makes Caden Caden. Okay. Got it. So yeah, looking forward to. I I I actually legitimately cannot guess which one it is. Um, I'm gonna guess it's the two gauge one, having never looked at these cards before. Um, but yeah, tell me about these ultras. Alrighty. Uh, we'll start off with the. Uh, we'll start off with the the rising host. Actually, this is the the other half of Caden. Darn it! Uh, I had a fifty fifty is... shot and I lost. <laughs> Uh, it is uh, one gauge, uh, range one to three. It's only one power, six speed, no armor, no guard. Uh, however, it has uh, hit, put all copies of this card from your deck, discard, and in play into your hand. Uh, it should be worth noting, this is... Uh, uh, I don't know if typo is the right word. This has since been uh, errated. Uh, it does not return itself to your hand on hit, uh, which would technically mean that it doesn't deal damage. Oh, um, so is this is this? But would it come back to my hand after the after the strike is over? Correct. It is at the end of the strike. It does return oh. itself, which means that you don't get gauge out of it. It's not gauge neutral. You will spend a gauge, and you will not get it back. Okay. In, instead, I will get both copies of Rising Host back. Correct. Okay. Which is uh, the the reason that this is very important. Uh, this means that if you at any point you can get your rising as long as you get one Rising Host, you hit it, and you can go search your deck or discard for the other one. So as long as you are able to hit with one of your rising hosts, you are immediately able to go get the other one. And now you have EX rising host available. And right. As long and as that, you have a gauge, as long as that, you have a gauge to spend, you always have an EX attack ready to go and it will come back to your hand. Okay. And so, so I, I constantly have a one to three in exceed mode. I constantly have a one to three, four, six with a, with, one each armor and guard that just recurs itself. One to three, four, seven. Oh, right. One to three, four, seven. Thank you. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's, that seems, that seems quite strong. Um, is, is this an alternative to my game plan or am I like, this is something that I do as a win condition after I've exceeded. This is definitely after you have exceeded. It could be used before. However, uh, even, even EX when it's not, uh, uh is only two damage. 
right. um, uh, which notably uh, any attack that is ex back at you, uh, this won't but, break. This, what, you yeah, can't won't, stun won't your, stun your speed anything. advantage right. isn't much in that okay. regard. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, it is specifically after he has exceeded and making that that four power uh, is is significant. Uh, but more so, it is because it is a fast option that is always available in his hand, which means that uh, his problem before of giving my information to his opponents uh, by losing cards uh, and and then not having those options available uh, means that now this means that he has an EXable option pretty much always, as long as you have a gauge available, and your opponent knows you have it. Uh, right. Because you've you've revealed the other one and shown that you picked it up from your deck, for example. Right, right. Uh, which means that now when you ex an attack, your opponent has to question. You know, can I grasp betting that I can beat this double charge executioner because this is speed seven? Uh, not sure if grasp is necessarily a safe option anymore. Right. So, so I always have a hover for whatever mix up I'm throwing. Generally, yes. Okay, interesting. So, so I will always be able to say like like if I have a gauge as exceeded Caden. These now, any card, Spike, uh, anything that hits from range one to three, now has the question mark of, am I hitting you for uh, a one to three, four, seven? Am I hitting you above curve or am I hitting you as a mid speed? Am I hitting you and gaining advantage? Like, I can I can cover for all of my other options with this card. Right. And that's why that's why it's very important. Uh, okay. And uh, also worth noting. Uh, as generally with a lot of characters, you don't want to have a single card in your kit that's of vital importance for you, uh, because there is parry, and your opponent can just make you discard it. Uh, sure. So putting a lot of stock into one card is generally risky. Uh, however, because this has the hit effect of returning the other one from your deck discard or in play, even if they parry one of them, if you hit with the other, you're going to get it back. Right. Right. Okay. So it's it's difficult to 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 get it away from him, and it's right. even more difficult than that, as we'll we'll get into once we go back into the boosts. Okay. So I I I should be unlike my exceed mode, which seems like I'm going to have to fight for. Ha having this seems actually quite hard to get rid of on my opponent's part. Right. Okay. Interesting. Uh, uh, essentially. Uh, one way would be if they if they called out the one that you had before uh, or you had boosted with it. Uh, the one rare circumstance that can happen, uh, say you, you know, EX with this against your opponent and your opponent defended with a sweep uh, mm -hmm. and you didn't break it because when you hit effect, the one that you, you threw away for the, the EX goes back to your hand when you hit. And then if the sweep hits you back, it can make oh, you discard they that could copy. Di they could discard one. That's right. Okay. And if that was on your strike, then your opponent could immediately on their turn parry the parry other Parry right away. Right. Interesting. Okay. So so there's there's ways. It's not completely 100% safe, but that's that was a complicated scenario that you just that you just told me. I On the one hand, that seems unlikely. On the other hand, the fact that you had a complicated scenario on deck means that that's probably happened to you. Uh, it, it is. Uh, it has not happened. It has. It has come close. Uh, okay. However, uh, as we go into the next ultra, it, it will become clear that even that isn't going to be enough. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Let's let's talk uh, about Dark Tide Summon. Uh, a very similar shape. It's uh, an additional gauge uh, with an, an additional range and two more power. Uh, it's got hit. Name another card. Notably, it can't name itself. Uh, oh. Uh, and then return all of all copies of it from your discard to your hand. So even if you did happen to lose both of your rising hosts, you can hit with the other ultra and get both of your rising hosts back. Okay. So so this this is my uh, go get another option, um, specifically from my discard pile. This is from anywhere. Correct. Um, However, so, this so, is only the other rising host, and this is right. any other card other than this itself. is any other card. And it it like if they're both in the discard pile. Um, you know, not engaged, not in my deck, nowhere else. Um, I can, I can get that back. It also occurs to me now that I said engage. Rising host cannot go to gauge, which means that the fact that it can't pull uh, something from my gauge doesn't matter, right? It theoretically can go to your gauge. Caden can't do it himself. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's. Uh, I, there are, uh, especially wow. from season one, there are, uh, for example, Natali can. Uh, oh, uh, OK. So so another character who has an ability to to mess with my gauge might actually uh, 
I would never choose to do that, but it could happen. Right. Well, uh, it, even even if you did, it wouldn't be really bad for you. Uh, you as just if change, you were to play you the other cards. rising host, you can pay. If you were to play your rising host, you could pay with the rising host that was in your gauge. It would go so to your discard you pile. Just, it okay, so so they they can't they can't stop this from happening. That's a very funny interaction, though. Um, yeah. The, uh, the, red, there is red, also the concern of uh, characters that conceal your attack, such as Balecor. That is a very dangerous one, as you'll he he can take your rising host. He, from he you can forever. legitimately take it and not give it back. Uh, yeah, I mean, like honestly, like like people like me who who kind of came into uh, exceed a little bit later. And my first season was six. I went back as far as three. A lot of the the vagaries of Red Horizon and Seventh Cross design are very like. Kaminoa, you can do that. That's a that's a thing you can do. So I'm, this is very this is actually very cool. This is very exciting to learn about. Um, okay, so Dark Tide Summon. The use case on this hit effect seems pretty obvious. You pull out something crazy that your opponent can't deal with as an EX attack that you just spent two copies of and just blow them up with it next turn or something. Right. Uh, and uh, the the important note with this is because uh, you need to worry about reading. Uh, so generally you don't want to grab normals, uh, as that's a very dangerous, uh, right. proposition, unless right. you're, if you manage to hit with this on defense, uh, you could then go ahead and grab, uh, your, your EX attack back out of your discard to then play it on your turn. It's very right. telling. Uh, uh, however, in some cases, for example, like EX assaults, uh, even if your opponent knows exactly what you're doing, it is very difficult to deal with. All right. One, one of the upsides of EX attacks in general is that they can be completely transparent and you can still just kill your opponent with them right okay makes sense um so most of the time i would be getting two copies of my specials back out but you know those special or those specials are not as good as the normals most of the time like like the like we just got done talking about these when you ex them they are and they they can be very strong but my opponent knows that what's coming into my hand so i don't necessarily uh you know, if if I pull both copies of Fusion Bane back, for example, they saw it in my discard pile. Like that's public information. They know what's coming into my hand. And then the next turn I play an EX attack. It's probably a good idea to have another EX attack in my hand already. Too. This is another reason why Rising Host specifically is is very important because they Got know it. it's they, they know it's basically always in your hand. So even immediately after doing this, you then you you take back your EX sweep, for example. Right. And then you play an EX attack against them. Now they have to question, is it the sweep you just picked up? Is it the rising host that was already in your hand? Or was it because when you EX attacked with this in the first place and you drew another card, is it another third attack option that wasn't right. available before? Okay, gotcha. I forgot about the card draw thing again. Okay, cool. So so I have, I got a fairly serious late game mix-ups that are enabled by my ultras. Um this doesn't, and obviously this I'm going to be playing as an EX attack as many chances as I can get because that's the point of it. Is this something that needs to be EX or is it more that I, I should try to hit with this twice? Uh, this one I will note. Uh, it is th This one is more difficult to play as an attack in the first place. Uh, the I will mention, however, uh, this one has the this boost, Silence, which is effectively the same exact thing as the hit effect. Oh, okay. So you, you, you don't necessarily need to attack with this in order to, to get everything you want out of it right uh it is it is still worth noting as an attack uh as it is only two gauge so it's not it's not it's not going to break the bank necessarily right. uh and more noteworthy uh it hits at range four which is important as uh he doesn't have many other options that are able to aside from say chain from, strike from chain strike but this unlike chain strike this one ex for example can hit for six right okay and also i mean uh the you you cannot boost silence on defense so having right. Dark Tide Summon as a way, especially above curve, to get something back into your uh, into your hand to EX with on your next turn, you couldn't do that with Silence. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Um, interesting. So, so that is those are his attacks. Um, they they seem odd, right? They seem like like, and th this is something that that people who are much more experienced in Exceed than I am talk about power budget sometimes. It seems like a lot of Caden is in and maybe four. Like, like most of Caden seems to have been put into those cards. 
Uh, well, it does. It does. It does depend. Um, and this is where, uh, for example, these these two are should not be underestimated either. Okay. Uh, any anything that has the potential of hitting you for nine uh, is is scary. You need to watch out when, for that when, for sure. Right. When, when your focus is not safe, it, it, it's a dangerous position to be in. Fair, fair point. Fair point. Um, before we get into the boosts, it you saying that just made me realize uh, I can't. Wild swing and EX. That can't happen. Right. Because most of Caden's specials are not particularly good uh, EX, or, or not particularly good when they aren't EX attacks, and the couple that are require fairly specific conditions to be good. Is Caden just a very bad wild swinger? Uh, I would say generally yes, uh, especially because you... Uh... So what the the main line, uh, at least is for me playing Caden, is uh, you want to dig through the, around half of the deck like a, as quick as you can. Uh, typically, by the time you're able to exceed, you'll be around there. Um, and the whole time playing up front, you generally want to avoid playing uh, a copy of a card that wasn't already played yet. Uh, because you want to keep your later EX options available. If you, if you, by the time you get halfway through your deck, if you've played one copy of everything, you've thrown away every EX option you have effectively. Right. So you want to, you want to avoid throwing away an option you haven't thrown away yet. So, so uh, I, I play, I play, um, uh, cross, and then a couple turns later, I draw another cross. I might use that for run, rather right. than spend another thing as force to move back in. I want right. both copies of everything sort of synced up with their partner. Right. And that oh. is also uh, by wild swinging, you're, you're running the risk of throwing away an option you haven't thrown away yet. Okay. That's a, that's a fair point. And then late in the game, when I want to actually be playing my, my EXs as the kind, of, the kind of main form of my offense, that's not doing anything for me. Uh, sorry, say again. Oh, the, the, uh, when in the late game, when I have my character ability, I am looking to hit with EX attacks, wild swinging is not going to do anything for me to enable me to hit with EX attacks. Right, right. Okay. It can only, it'll, it'll only hurt you. Okay. Generally speaking, I, there is a possibility, say, you wild swing into, you know, uh, your Dark Tide summon and then pull an EX attack out of your discard, but that's, a, that's the exception, not the rule. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Um, should we talk about uh, boosts a little bit? Uh, yes, this would be, this is the, uh, where the boosts become important uh okay. we, we, we talked about silence so i guess we'll go we'll go back uh sure Sounds silence good. it is the same effect as the hit effect um it costs you a gauge uh and notably uh, also your action as you're taking an action to uh let your opponent know exactly what you're taking and then uh, uh spending a force to do so right. notably uh if you have say uh, a sweep in your hand and a sweep in your discard by using this you can pay the one force cost with the sweep that was already in your hand to mm. then pull both sweeps back so, now, uh, now so you if, you're, if you're getting if you're getting an option that's already in your hand it effectively doesn't cost force technically okay that makes sense and and you are able and like you know it may have been like a slightly inefficient use of it because you're not getting two cards from your discard pile but the end result is that you got an ex attack for spending less force Okay, that makes sense. Cool. Uh, uh, and that, that's that's essentially it for that. The main the main use, uh, of course, is just getting a, a, a potent option uh, if your opponent has a particular weak point, um, uh, like say uh, habit call is exceptionally deadly to them or something. Um, sure. Then going and grabbing the option that even though they know you have it is they can't do anything to stop you. Uh, right. Then trying to hit them where they're weak, that's an option. Um, as well as it's it's useful just to have it as a uh, uh, insurance, you know, for if uh, at some point you lo lost your rising hosts. Uh, for example, some there there are uh, a few characters that can make you discard two cards at random, and you can just get unlucky and lose both of your rising hosts in one go. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so uh, there's there's those. It, it's a, a insurance policy to get your your rising host back if need be. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, this can be used for uh, obviously just two force, um, which is another thing we'll get back to later. Uh, yeah, so of I, course, I, moving, I... Over, moving over your opponent, and there's another boost he has that requires two force to play. Okay, makes sense. And and this is something you know the thing that you said specifically about um, uh, doing getting something back that your opponent can't deal with. 
the odds of something like that existing rises immensely as the game goes on, right? Like at the example you use is Havoc Call. There are plenty of of things that my opponent can do with a fresh deck that could probably deal okay mm. with EX Havoc Call. But if those things are down, that's when you go and get it back. Right. And so that's I, what I mentioned. Like if they if they have a, a weak point that you can exploit, this can be right. to, to, to do so. And and that weak point is going to open up in the later game, which means that this is probably a later game boost. Yes. Makes sense. Okay. And then and then for, for the first uh, part of the game, it might just be force that you're spending. Uh, especially so if uh, if at some point your opponent has uh, played their second focus, uh, then now this has they have just opened up all of your your normals that you can go ahead and grab without Got fear it. of being read. Got it. Okay. And and in that case, it's it's like it's not necessarily that you are are finally their, their focus is down. I I can um I can cleanly beat everything they're doing. It's more that now you aren't worried about them winning combat for free with reading. Right. Makes sense. Okay, cool. It, 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 is, it is typically a dangerous proposition to, you know, go ahead and throw that sweep in your hand and your opponent has a focus and a spike available for you. Definitely. Definitely. Makes sense. Okay. Um, shall we move on to insurmountable? Yes. Uh, also one force, continuous boosts. It's plus three armor and plus three guard. Uh, quite a lot of defensive uh, value here. Uh, it is generally a risky proposition to kind of lose your your rising host ex option because notably if you've boosted with this then uh you don't have your uh it's not uh, available to ex and especially right. because you're passing the priority back to your opponent um now your opponent knows that your your ex rising host is off the table at least for the moment however right. uh even if you're not fast you're at least tough now right uh, uh, another important note there is that uh, this will be a boost in play. If you were to play your other rising host, it will pull the boost in play, uh, which notably, if you hit your opponent first, you're going to pull your oh, boost back. That you're going was... to lose your own armor. Right. Interesting. And, and if they care about reactive stun, if, they, if they're guile or something, if they, if they care, or rather, um, no, um, he cares about being stunned. If, if they're a character who cares about stunning you, even after you've gone first, which, which can happen, that could matter too. But losing the armor is, might be a big deal. Yeah, uh, it's just it, w worth noting that you don't necessarily. It, you could try to use it to fake out your opponent, but generally might not be a good idea. Sure, as makes if sense. you if you were in that position anyway, you could have just ex rising hosted, uh, right? Which is generally a better option. So, so am I? Am I because of how important rising host is? Am I going to have difficulty playing insurmountable just for fear of losing it? Yes, it it definitely it depends on the situation. Uh, there are some. Uh, uh, a character such as uh, let's say Potemkin, who is uh, exceptionally tough, you're you're less reliant on this as an EX attack because the four damage is is noteworthy. But against an opponent that you're almost never going to stun anyway with that four damage, it right. might be worthwhile to just go ahead and get that armor and guard to make things like double charge executioner or sweep uh, significantly tougher options. So that you can take them, uh, like in a in a, a range one melee. You can at least trade back, right? Okay, uh, and and I assume so. Well, if you don't have the other copy of Rising Host at all, like like when we said earlier about like silence is probably a late game boost, and you could spend it as force in the early game. What are you doing with this card in the early game, where you're you're not really planning to ex it yet, but also using it as a boost is going to get rid of it and that is risky too like like how do you how do you deal with it being in your hand early on uh it is generally not bad to have it in your hand early on one is uh uh at any point typically you want to wait until after you're exceeded it depends on your circumstance but it it, it is spending a gauge that isn't going to refund itself so Every time you use this when you're not exceeded is delaying your exceed by one gauge. Right. right. Uh, however, if at any point you're able to hit with this, uh, you just you can grab the other one out of the deck. So uh, having it in your hand is usually not something you're afraid of. Uh, worst case scenario, you can pay it as a boost or pay it as force. Um, and then if you eventually draw the other, then you can pull this one back out of your, your discard. Sure. OK, that makes sense. Um, you're so you're generally not uh, afraid of losing your rising host, uh, and I'm never afraid of having it in my hand because I it, it is an option that I want to be available as soon as possible and keep it available as long as possible. Makes sense. Okay, cool. Um, we've talked a little bit about chain extension just being a, a good combo with Havoc Call. 
Um, anything else that we want to mention about this? I know that like plus two range is just good. Yeah, that's the it. It is. It, it doesn't really have anything particularly noteworthy with the rest of his attacks. Uh, the only other thing I would say is is maybe noteworthy is chain strike now hits at eight. Yep. Uh, so it hits anywhere. Uh, that's that's about it. Plus zero to right. two range is just good on everything. Th- this <laughs> this also enables a lot of very fun things you can do with normals. Um, range five spike is frequently un- almost unavoidable. Uh, yeah. Range range one to five sweep you can't cross out of range three grasp probably just wins a combat for free. Yep. Um, you you uh, putting range on normals is just really really strong in general. There's also being able to uh, uh, be able to play dive particularly like an ex dive at range one. At range one, sure, okay, yeah, you you actually have like some some mid speed coverage that can hit. You can turn into cami for a turn. Yep. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. Um. How about uh, Secret Weapon? Yeah, Secret Weapon is his... Uh, it costs two force, uh, which is what I was mentioning. Uh, funny enough, that uh, that Ultra that you end up uh, questioning if you want to use it at the moment or not uh, right. is a perfect fit for that two force. Perfect, yeah. Uh, it also depends. Um, the the cards that you have already have uh, like a copy in your discard and you're not intending to get them going again immediately... Uh, such as with the after effect on double charge executioner, right? Uh, or or with dark tide summon, um, those ones can be effective because again you want to get rid of options that are already down. Uh, and if you were going to be spending the force anyway, you might as well choose those. Uh, but it is search your deck for a card, add it to your hand, and then shuffle. Notably, uh, you're not revealing that card. It is a secret weapon. Okay, sure. It's not. It's not a revealed to your. The name of the boost is not revealed to your opponent weapon. <laughs> Okay, so this is a tutor for for my my Magic Gathering fans out there. This is this is a a almost unique effect in Exceed. I think there are, I can't think of very many tutors in any of the seasons that I've played at all. Um, uh, oddly, uh, the other character I'll be covering, uh, Miska, has uh, essentially the same thing: priority requisition. Gotcha. Okay, so so we found your character type is is yeah. characters <laughs> who can take things out of their deck. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> So for for people who are not familiar with this kind of effect, just getting whatever you need when you need it in other card games is insane, right? It, it's it's like one of the strongest effects you can have. How is it in Exceed? Like, is it is it as powerful as it would be in another card game, or is it is this does it change somewhat based on the game we're playing? It is. It does. It depends on a lot. Uh, for one, uh, because of how important Rising Host is, uh, it can be telling that rising host is what you're looking for um uh however that's also a, a case of uh especially given the kind of mix-up potential that caden does have assuming that you knowing assuming that you know what caden is about to do could be a fatal mistake uh but it is it if you're looking for a specific option that you need right now um uh, especially in the case of, as mentioned before, with uh, the uh, Dark Tide Summon and the boost on it, if there's a specific weak point that your opponent has um, uh, that you are ready to exploit, uh, the other note is that you're only looking for one, so pretty much you need to have the other one in your hand uh, right. to make the most use of it. Right, makes sense. Um... Uh, it, it is it is situational, and of course, the longer the game goes on, the more options that you have in your discard, the more you're narrowing down to your opponent what it is that you're trying to go get. What it is you're getting, um, good point. Okay. But that is, it's it's a trade-off, because the the as the game goes on, you have less options, and it, it gives your opponent more information, but also as the game goes on, your opponent has less options to deal with what you're going to get, so... It's more telling, but there's also less your opponent can do about it, even right. though they know. You might not care. Uh, unless unless they they do you know hail mary or reading because they're pretty sure it's a normal or something, but but you you have uh, you're trading in information obscurity for kind of assurance that it's going to work if you get it right. And that was the the you you mentioned with the normal that was the other thing I was going to get to is this is his uh, he has he has one more that we're going to get to uh, option for getting cards back out of his discard. This is his one option. Uh, I suppose you could say. It's it's a little bit more because he has other like deeper card draw effects such as on Fusion Bane here or the after right. pick up the top three right um, but this is his one option to go search for the specific thing he wants uh, and it can be a normal 
that they, he doesn't have to show to his opponent. Right. And and we, we started this lesson talking about like Caden is an EX character. He needs EX attacks, obviously. And th this is like hard draw can help. Recurring options can help. But going to get the card you need to make an EX is it se seems like it is it is, you know, short of just drawing a lot of cards. That's how you're going to do it. That's how you're going to make your EX attacks. Right. Uh, okay. The the down the the downside, of course, uh, this is, it, it is two force uh, that is not free. Uh, Caden right. is able to uh, his drawing with his ex attacks is helpful, um, but he doesn't have any other means of uh, he doesn't have uh, boosts that are like go draw three cards. Sure, um, sure. So he's got a he, he has to ex the old fashioned way, and he has to prepare the old fashioned way or change right. cards. Change change so, cards. Uh, and, okay. Two force is significant, uh, especially as we'll get to later. Uh, Caden wants a a stacked hand as often as possible. Okay, so uh, so basically, this is boosting. This is very very strong. But for people who are coming in from other card games, don't think of it as like a silver bullet answer to all your problems. You do need to consider what you're spending and and the economy of of the situation before you go looking for an answer, and really what your opponent can do about it. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Um, shall we move on to recall? Uh, yes, uh, recall is uh, this one zero force. You reveal a card from your hand, and then you return a copy of that card from your discard to your hand. Okay. Uh, so this is you have to have uh, one of them in your hand already, but it's useful for say that havoc call that you played earlier to go get that gauge. Uh, after you've exceeded, you right. can now once you get the other havoc call, you could boost with recall here to pick up your other havoc call, and it's ready to ex again. Right. Uh, okay. It can also be used for, uh, say, uh, uh, if you want to get that other rising host that ended up in your discard, but you don't want to waste the gauge to hit for only one damage to go get it back, you can do this. And it's not very telling because your opponent pretty much knows you always have rising host anyway. So telling them, hey, I have rising host is not right. really, you're not giving much information in that regard. Right. They're, they're like, okay, you're playing Caden. I figured that out already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, uh, so, so I, I've got among the boosts here, I actually have a lot of ways to mess with my hand, but almost all of them are, you know, some of them are on attack. Some of them are on boost. Some of them are expensive. Some of them aren't Th this, this looks to be the cheapest way to get something back, but I am, you know, this is not secret information and this is correct. Okay. Um, so there, there's, there's considerations there as well. Interesting. Um, how about, uh, no, notably, uh, notably, because Calamity Bell is already an attack that you would want to EX if available, uh, you generally don't want to use Recall unless Calamity Bell is already off the table. Okay. Otherwise, you're using Recall to get an EX option back, but if you haven't used the other Calamity Bell yet, then you're, you're getting an EX option back to throw away an EX option. To not, to not play a pretty good EX option. Right. Okay, uh, interesting. It's, it's not necessarily that you never want to do that, it just it definitely depends on the circumstance. Okay. So, and uh, this is, this might be a good time to talk about it. We can also save it for, for after these last two boosts, but, um, yeah, these boosts seem in many cases, like more usable than a single copy of the attack would be like, like, as like we can, we can talk about tutoring and exceed maybe isn't the same as tutoring another card game, but secret weapon seems way, way, way stronger than a single copy of fusion Bane is, right. um, yeah. <laughs> especially fusion Bane specifically. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, so so, you know, debating whether you are playing um, Secret Weapon or holding on to the other copy of Fusion Bane for something else for later, that might be a real debate. But if I only have one of these in my hand and I need Secret Weapon right now or whatever, I need, I need any of these boosts right now, how are you evaluating whether to hold on to an EX for later, get the thing back with an EX for later, play the boost now. Like, like how are you making those, those kinds of decisions? It definitely depends. Uh, there, are, there are certain EX attacks that are better than others, uh, particularly mm -hmm. in the case of normals. Uh, EX Assault is very good. Yes. Uh, even on defense, uh, at range two or three, even at one, it's not... not it, it it carries a little bit more risk, but it's not very. It's not even a high risk option necessarily. It's just right. an option that is 
that is particularly deadly even in, ex in exceed mode. Uh, right. It is uh, e even even player characters that aren't Caden just having a, being able to respond with an ex assault at range three is just always a good oh, yeah. option most of the time. Yep. Uh, so that one's particularly good. Sweep under normal circumstances, uh, specifically because he's able to ex, but because uh, he's already got things like double charge executioner and fusion bane, he can put out that massive damage at roughly the same speed. Um, so it's not a high priority, uh, but it is still a noteworthy option. Dive, of course, uh, EX Dive at range 3 is uh, almost as good as it gets. Uh, often it is, it often is, unbeatable. It, when yeah. it wins, it wins completely. Uh, yep. Same thing with Spike, although yep. Spike is slower. Uh, but the noteworthy thing with Spike is, of course, uh, you know, am, am I hitting with Rising Host? Can you can you go ahead and sweep and tank this? Or is right. it Spike and this is going to hit you for eight now? Right, right. Got eight damage spike. That sounds kind of fun. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So so I, I'm I'm looking for specific EX attacks over others. Um and I'm right. I'm to I'm, to specifically go for uh you know trying to get an EX focus, probably not. EX cross. It it, it depends, maybe on your circumstance, but there are some that are right. dive assaults are, are are noteworthy as they're particularly good. Of right. course, this means if your opponent is, is paying attention to this as well, that is, it could be a little telling. You know, you don't have any of these in your discard, and you just secret weaponed, and they already knew you had Rising Host, for example. Right. Uh, you know, maybe maybe now trying to read a dive or assault is a little more tempting. Right. But but in general, I would be okay with with giving up. So basically, like, in order to use any of these boosts, I'm using a copy of the card. And I could right. get that copy of the card back using various other boosts, but then I'd be giving up with the exception of Rising Host, and I'd be giving up the uh, another copy of that card. So, excuse me. I am trading in, every time I use one of these boosts that pull something from my deck, I'm trading in one EX attack for another. Um, it had better be a better EX attack than Fusion Bane. Or Fusion Bane better not be available as an EX attack before I go looking for Secret Weapon. Yes, uh, it okay. is also worth noting just the because the two force cost is significant, uh, especially if your if your hand is already running low anyway. It might be better just to throw that fusion bane with something else to change cards for more cards anyway. Sure, okay. Uh, so e e even if you were desperate for options, depending on what exactly you're desperate for, it might be worth it just to to get more cards rather than a specific single card. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and, and I should be evaluating kind of all of those boosts in that way where, yeah, okay, awesome. It would be great to be able to recall something, but as you said, if I have EX Calamity Bell, I might as well just play EX Calamity Bell. The EX I'm getting better be better than the EX Calamity Bell or Calamity Bell is not available as an EX. I've already spent one copy to get Gage. The other one I could use to get something else. That is that is exactly right, especially okay. when we get into uh, the 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 economy of Caden. Uh, that is it, it. It very much is like that. OK, sounds good. Um, let's uh, let's cover these last two boosts and then we can we can talk economy a little bit. Alrighty. Uh, here we have perfect evolution, zero cost, instant boost. Uh, pick up the top three cards of your deck, draw one, put the rest on the bottom of your deck. Notably, that is uh, in any order. Um, uh, it is very similar, but not quite the same as the after effect on Fusion Bane. Uh, right. Fusion Bane is uh, you draw one and discard the rest, where uh, Perfect Evolution here is you put the other two on the bottom of your deck. So you right. keep that information concealed. So you're able to get information on what, uh, it, because at the bottom of your deck, it's basically no longer an EXable option, at least not for a long time. But now that's right. information that you have that your opponent doesn't, uh, which is important. Right, sure. And also it means I didn't have to play Fusion Bane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, that is about it. Um, because of Havoc Call is already so useful as a uh, attack, if if you've already played a Havoc Call and you don't intend on getting it back with, say, uh, like the After Effect here or with Recall, um, and you just want to go ahead and use that as an option to look for some some different options, uh, it, it, it can be worthwhile. Uh, but again, just as mentioned with the other one, uh, it is not worth throwing away the EXable Habit Call option, generally speaking. Right, makes sense. So so I'd play the attack first, and then I'd, I'd boost it later on once one of them's already gone. Right, yeah. M makes sense. Uh, okay. Especially because it's a zero cost, so uh, it's it's an effectively prepare, but uh, with better odds. Right, and, and some weird card manipulation in the middle of it. I'm not going to get those cards back for a long time. Um, I guess I could. I have... I have uh, 
No, no. Uh, yeah, I, I have I have secret weapon, so I, I could go get them from the bottom of my deck, I guess. But again, uh, it that, can al- that's costly. it can also be it can also be useful as a tell for uh, if you're if you're debating on whether you want to reshuffle now or not. Uh, if you if you use this and you find out like oh there were there were these two options that I really wanted, I got one of them with the draw effect, but now the other one's at the bottom. I know I'm not going to get it for a while. Oh. If I was already on the fence on whether I wanted to reshuffle or not, that might be the 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 thing that lets me make that decision like okay now that that option is so far away go ahead and reshuffle because go ahead and reshuffle uh, right or i i'm getting near the bottom of my deck anyway just because of the natural i've changed cards a lot uh and now i'm i'm nearing the bottom of my deck i know that there's an option that i really need down there i didn't plan it that way but it's it's on it's on its way and it's the last card in my deck i i'll make a i'll make a huge change cards action to go get it or something and and rather than taking the manual reshuffle something like that uh, it can also be it can also be for uh, you know you were holding on to one of your other cards thinking like maybe I'll get the ex version and then if you use this you know it's at the bottom so uh, you know go ahead and go ahead and burn go the recall and, because and calamity bells boost be a while it. right okay interesting so so it it um it's probably bad that you lost an ex attack that you'd rather play but that enables other plays so that lets you more freely spend some of these resources and and more freely make decisions based on the information you have. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Uh, lastly, we have no pain. Uh, this one is the the definitely the least used boost uh, as far as for me in the kit. Sure. Uh, one force continuous boost, just stun immunity. That's it. Yep. Uh, for one, it's on chain strike, which is a it's virtually free gauge. Of course, it depends on where you are. If you're at range one, especially against like a grappling kind of opponent who is virtually never going to be in range four if they can help it, right. uh, then you're probably not going to be using this as an attack anyway. So it, it could be worth it in that regard. Uh, however, with Caden, uh, assuming that you're EXing options, usually you don't end up getting stunned because his fast options are very fast and his slow options are tough enough that if they hit you hard enough to stun you, there's, there's not usually the case. Uh, right. There are some enemies who, who hit particularly hard, uh, say, Akuma. Sure, um, sure. Uh, so it could be useful in, the, in those cases, uh, but generally, uh, the 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 types of things, for example, uh, calamity bell, making it stun immune. The thing you were afraid of was grasp across anyway, and being stun immune isn't helping. It, you. it didn't help you totally, and and I mean, so one of the one of the great things about ex attacks is that they can be force multipliers for boosts. You know, if, if I if I put down on on my turn, I put down fierce. Now I'm Caden too. Everybody's Caden because now they got a plus three power EX attack. Um, if you are putting down a stun immune EX attack, to your point, you're not actually doing anything to make that attack better. If it wasn't already, you know, if you were if you were putting down an EX attack that wasn't already, uh, if not stun immune, very hard to stun. Looking at his kit, that's not happening super often. And then there are other cases uh, where it, it, the other reason, rather, like if you were already on the fence on whether you wanted to do this, because there are some circumstances where you need that little that extra defense because you don't want to get stunned. Right. Uh, there's already insurmountable on Rising Host, which is already an attack that you can very reliably get back in your hand. Very with, true. For the yeah. Same force lost. It's not stun immune, but it's plus three armor and guard. So. Yeah, you're not immune. You could still get stunned, right. but now you also have three armor. So now you're not just not getting right. stunned. You're also taking three less damage. <laughs> right. So short, short of a person threatening a really, really scary range one ignore guard option that you really just can't deal with, this is this is not worth giving up chain strike for. G- generally not. Yes. Again, it, in specific circumstances where you're just never going to be able to get to that range anyway, uh, it might it's it's a little more worth it there. Even then, though. Just spending it as force to play insurmountable is sure. is like a better a better use for that force if you were going to try to go in that direction anyway. Right, that makes sense. Okay. Um. All right. So so that is that is the kit. Then what a weird character. Um, he is. He is. He is strange. I kind of like. I, I'm I'm sort of starting to to appreciate some of the the weirder, slightly jankier designs in Exceed. So I'm I'm glad that I'm learning about this guy. Before we get into the economy, do we want to talk a little bit about? Obviously, we talked a lot about normals as attacks, 
and how they're good. And when you EX them, they're great. And when Caden EXs them, they're very, very great. Yes. Um, any particular use cases for the normal boosts, or does he tend to use those like any other character would? Uh, it's kind of like every other character would. For Caden, again, uh, the same rule that was applying to his specials, uh, again, with the exception of like block and focus, uh, if you have the option to EX them, you would rather EX them. Right. So um, I, I've already I've already played a sweep early in the game. Uh, I would rather light than right, yes. use another boost on a on a attack that I haven't already used yet. Right, and if you it, it, it generally you want to ex when you can. If you can't ex, change you want to you want to burn through options and get more cards until you can ex. Uh, wasting your time playing non ex options is generally not good for you. Okay. So, so if I don't have a, a, and this is actually, so that was a very brief segue on normals, then that's a great way to talk about economy. If I don't have a viable EX attack to play, I need one. And if right. I'm not getting it from a boost, if I'm not getting it from uh, various hit effects that let me recur something, I'm changing this cards. is This is, of course, after you've exceeded. Uh, yes. If you're not exceeded yet, your priority is try to hit with easy confirm attacks maybe lose yep. some trades just to get that gauge to exceed as soon as possible block cross chain strike uh, uh grasp somewhere i can probably find the gauge but it it my opponent might be playing to stop me from getting the gauge right yeah okay uh, of course it, it, it's it's yeah just get the gauge and exceed as soon as possible that is of course a lot easier said than done sometimes of course, yeah um and it also seems like once i'm in exceed mode the game if i get good ex attacks the game is not going to last that much longer that, um, that is typically the case yes yeah. should i be expecting to struggle for most of the game to get to my exceed mode or is it more like um like act one get gauge to exceed act two build ex attacks act three the game is now over because i've hit ex attacks it, it is it is more like the second option there uh okay. it, it, it requires a little bit of setup it's because of the the boost options and the uh, like the after effects on like fusion bane and double charge executioner, um, as well as rising host refunding or going and getting the other rising host, you have access to dark tide summon and the boost on dark tide summon. He he on the surface it looks like oh he needs the ex attacks so like he's got to get like perfect luck. He does right. not need perfect luck. Uh, it's he can he can manipulate the odds in his favor to an extent. Right. There is unfortunately sometimes sometimes the deck is you know it doesn't need to be perfectly in your favor, but sometimes it is perfectly stacked against you, and right. uh, it is it is a little unfortunate there. Sometimes sometimes you're dealt a bad deck order. All of my ultras are on the bottom of my deck. I have no tutor. I have no recursion anywhere. Uh, well, for for Caden specifically, uh, the you end up in the worst case scenario where there's you you end up with virtually no uh, natural ex x's being given to you, and everything is you've got half of all of your options on on the top, and then the other half of right. like, the, the counterpart are all below, so, so, uh, sort of sort of woven in. So you need to be holding options, and you're holding options. You're like, I've been holding this for too long. Where is it? Where is that other right. copy? Oh, it's near the end. Of, it's at the bottom of my deck. Uh, that is, of course, a situation where, uh, say, secret weapon is handy. Right. Um, uh, but uh, that that generally that's a, an exception. Um, that, of course, like any any character, that kind of applies to any character. Sometimes you're, the options that you need are just not available. Uh, right. Caden maybe is a little bit more susceptible to that. Uh, but generally speaking, usually you can you can make it work even when the odds are a little bit against you. You can you can manipulate them enough to get what you need. Right. Uh, especially because Caden is he doesn't really need specific options. Uh, for example, Caden doesn't have to like oh I really need double charge executioner specifically right now. It's right. Uh, I need Two I need an EX card. attack. Right. Yeah, I don't care which card it is. Most of the time, I just need right. the other one. It'll probably be fine. Okay. So so. The 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 kind of like um the the triage the uh the decision making priority tree is like if I have the chance to play or save for an ex attack later I don't want to be striking with or boosting with that card um especially if it's like a particularly high value one but in the early game I will to get gauge uh there are some cards that you know and I, I would prefer to to go for these kinds of things you know block across your your easy gauge generating tools uh later in the game ex attacks are online um 
this seems like it's pretty much always an attack and not a boost. This seems kind of 50-50. Uh, but for all of these, when I say they're kind of 50-50, what it sounds like I mean is it, it's if the EX attack is there, play the EX attack. Or if the chance of the EX attack is there, hold out for the EX attack. Um, and all of these kind of seem like you are you you will boost them if you have to to get something else, but otherwise play the EX attack. Um, the, the, time, the, the times that you don't want to be doing this is when you know, you probably don't want to boost your first copy of of any of these cards, it seems like, because then you're removing the chance of an EX attack for later. Is that kind of accurate? That's generally the case, yes. Uh, okay. It does, in the in the early part of the game, um, especially when you're just trying to get that gauge, uh, uh, It's a, you're, you're less worried about it. Uh, for the most part, during the early game, you want to hit with easy confirms, and... Uh, you also want to pay attention to if at any point you had to lose a card because you had to pay it as force or because your opponent made you discard a card with something like right. sweep. Um, you want to pay attention to your own discard to see which options have been lost. And then uh, if you have the option to trade the other card for something else, you want to do so. Uh, right. To keep you, you want to keep as many of the options still available as EX options as, if as pair as pairs as you can. Okay, so so and and like looking at his his force costs at his need probably to change cards occasionally. I will have things in my discard pile. I will have spent things like like the the decision making. I don't, I can't make like a rule for it ahead of time, but the decision making will will play out over the course of the game and i need to read that situation and be flexible towards it right he does not have a a consistent uh use this card in this scenario the one that he has that is consistent is rising host, rising that's, host. The, that's, that's the one everything else is kind of built around it i gotcha okay and and then i just i look at the situation in this in this scenario uh i needed to spend Calamity Bell is force to pay something else or just to change cards or move or something. Now recall is more online than it was before or whatever, whatever, right. whatever combination it was. Okay. Uh, right. And there there's, there's more to it than that as well, specifically because of Caden's other effect. Uh, the plus two power is of course the one that's the more flashy one, but that draw card is significant. Right. Um, and that is particularly once you have gotten to the point where, you know, maybe you have one or two gauge, Hopefully you have like a near full hand, at least five cards. Um, and you've got a discard of like, say, 10 cards. Um, so you've got a deck size that's like halfway or less. Um, right. And so because you've got a decent size hand, and if you have been able to filter out, if, if most of the cards that are in your discard, the other copy is also in your discard or in your gauge, uh, then when you EX an attack to draw a card there's a significantly higher chance that the card you just drew is another one that was already in your hand, which allows you to kind of chain into another EX attack to draw a card. To, to draw a card to get more things, right. Going. right. And another okay. important detail is normally when you're EXing an attack, you're hitting with a card. So that's the card that you just played. That's a card down from your hand. And then you right. have the other copy that you threw away. So when you EX an attack, you're losing two cards from your hand. Right. Uh, Caden is effectively only losing one option most of the time because he's refunding an option. Specifically, if he hits with Rising Host, because it comes back to his hand, he actually gains a card when he ex attacks you with that one. Okay, right. So, so th this is this is sustainable offense. Other than your gauge, it's sustainable offense that that will will actually make you go hand positive, which is cool. Right. Okay. So as long as you have a gauge available. Uh, so now you can ex an attack. Is it Rising Host? Is it something else? Uh, oh, look! It was Rising Host. There goes the gauge. Right. Uh, but now another card, and now we can EX again, draw another card, and uh, maybe it wasn't Rising Host this time, and now he's got another gauge. And now Rising I, Host I have a gauge, I can I can do it there. And and when I have a gauge, also like uh, it, it seems like it seems like one of the tricks to playing Caden is all right. I need to change cards anyway. Is there an opportunity here to get to move resources into a spot where I can get them later? So right, uh, and 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 like like. I need to move anyway. Is there an opportunity to make make this expenditure work for me or or pull double duty? Can I can I spend from gauge to get something into my discard pile right when I'm about to reshuffle? Can I uh spend from hand or spend from gauge in a way that gets copies together so I can get all of them back at once with uh you know or I I you know I I'm I, I'm about to play recall. 
I don't want to spend from hand so that I can have the other thing I'm going to spend from gauge instead. You're looking for ways to like to run your economy without like disrupting your flow of EX attacks. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. That, that's that's the important factor. And the, the other the other reason why that's important, uh, for one, just because his EX attacks, even the cards that don't hit for much, like grasp hits for six if it's yep. EXed. So yep. it uh, even even if he uh, obviously you don't necessarily want to just throw attacks blindly, but he doesn't have to worry really because even the trades that he doesn't win, he's still at most of the time is at least going to break even. Oh yeah. Um, and then the ones that he wins, he tends to win very hard. Uh, so you know when you can ex assault into a sweep and just completely win that seven damage and and you didn't take anything. That's 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 game ending. Right. Uh, yeah. Th this so is this it, is a game that that is built on trades and you can win cleanly when you're not allowed to right and right. so he he does want he wants to throw the exes the other note is if he does trade he's got extra power but he's also got that one extra armor which makes him trade just a little bit better in addition to keeping the cards coming in right. uh and so he doesn't have to prepare nearly as often and when he does usually you would rather change cards with options that are no longer available to make it more likely you're going to get exes and get the engine running again that are available and it could because i needed I, and that goes back to the thing i was saying saying you know, because you need you need things anyway but you need to do it in a way that doesn't disrupt the the flow of ex attacks or the, that increases the odds of more ex attacks coming in that makes sense Right, and so uh, he he does he does rely on uh, uh, again because he has this fast option. He 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 does he he's, he looks like he wants to trade, but he does tend to just outright win a lot of strikes as well. Right, right. Um, so he he, he does he, he hits he hits hard. <laughs> yeah, and and you don't you can you can afford to lose mix ups then, which because later on you'll be like or like you can afford to have a bad early game. You'll be like awesome right. when I get my stuff online. You're probably dead in three hits. Yes, because that, that's that's uh, exactly so. They it, it, if you got hit with both crosses early on, you know, against your you you were trying to confirm a hit with uh, your uh, habit call. Sure. Um, and you got hit with a cross, and then at some point you got hit with another cross, and so now your your fusion bane and double charge execution have became a lot more scary now. Right. Right. Yeah. So and and you've you've like you said they've a whole holes have opened up in in my opponent's defenses and I can exploit that. And when I exploit it, I exploit it really, really, really hard. Right. And, gotcha. and and not only not only that, but even after you've exploited it, you can then, for example, silence and go get them back and do get, it again. Get them back and do it again. And and that hole is still there in their in their uh in their defenses. And like that is worth the terrible neutral like like i i don't have any movement boost in anywhere in my kit i have very little movement on my attacks other than on chain strike i don't have much economy other than recursion and going to hunt for options and stuff and drawing from EXs. but when i get my way you die yes <laughs> okay sounds good yeah i mean that 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 seems all right to me it seems like a, a difficult character to pilot but it seems like he can actually he can make some things happen when things go his way uh, he is a, a, a. It's hard to say if he's really difficult to pilot. He 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 has the. It's a very basic skill set, uh, which is it's an upside and downside. One is because as as we've kind of gone over, his engine is fairly consistent. It has some problems, but for the most part, he can make it work. Right. Um, the problem is is that when it comes to like changing up his play style, it doesn't tend to work very well. He does. He he tends to. He has one 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 game plan and it works well or it doesn't or it doesn't uh, at all right yeah <laughs> okay that makes sense uh, uh, i was uh, also going to mention on the on the topic of uh boosts before um uh there was uh an exception specifically with grasp mm -hmm. um uh because caden hits a caden hits a, uh, a six damage uh threshold pretty consistently after he's in exceed mode right. uh have a call is six calamity bill is six uh, his dark tide summon is six, cross is six. Uh, so he he can hit for exactly six with his ex attacks. Right. Grasp the boost fierce is able to get you to that eight, uh, which not only deals with sweep but also deals but with focus. focus. Right. So boosting grasp into any of his other ex attacks uh, means that your opponent's defensive options don't work anymore. Uh, so it it it, it is it, it is worth considering whether you want to. Uh, even if you have ex grasp available if you want to boost fierce into something else right. yeah i mean having ex grasp available means that you can boost fierce twice 
and beat, you know, hit for 16 over two strikes. Yes. Okay. Which is, you know, Caden can just do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and, and th- that is the, that's what you're struggling toward. That's what this is all for. All of this struggle you're doing in the early game is to get to stuff like that. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Um, any other, you know, strategic consideration and notes before we move on to, I want to ask about counterplay and then we can probably wrap it up. Or is there anything else you wanted to mention? Uh, that is mostly it. Uh, there is a, uh, I'm not really sure if I could, it's, it's not exactly like, uh, a, a, a very noteworthy strategic option, but it is interesting. Sure. Uh, maybe worth pointing out. It's a little trick that Caden can do. He's not the only one, uh, there, I believe Emojin can do basically the same thing as well. Yeah. Emojin can do it. Um, she's from season two. Yep. Uh, there is, uh, specifically with perfect evolution. Uh, the boost that you're able to look at the top three cards, uh, you know, and you put two of them at the bottom and you're able to choose the order that they're in. Right. Um, in an unlikely scenario, say you and your opponent have already reshuffled and you're in kind of that that sudden death stage of the game where you're both desperately looking for your options. Uh, and you know that that last card. Uh, or even if you have three cards left in your deck, let's say, you know, let's. Uh, let's look at so you got like your, your spike here at the bottom, uh, you know, you've got an assault and. Uh, there'd be like a third card that you don't know. Right. Um, and you're in a situation where, uh, provided you only have one gauge and you have your EX Dark Tide Summon, or you could have EX Rising Host and no gauge, uh, because of your, when you set an EX attack, you're going to draw a card. Let's say uh, that, uh, I believe this was an Assault. Yeah. So uh, uh, you're in a situation where you've got like your focus in hand and you're, you're desperately looking for that option and you want to be able to play that Assault, like read a spike because you know your opponent has it. Um, but your other option is like a sweep. So if you read it and you're going to lose to that spike, if you read it, so, uh, you'd rather play the assault, but your top option is this grass that isn't going to help you. So you can do something uh, a bit janky of reading that spike that, you know, they have, and then playing like your EX rising host with no gauge to pay for it. Cause you're going to draw a card. And then when this is invalid, you're going to reveal that assault that you wanted because you knew where it was. Whoa. So, so this occasionally comes up in invalidation strategies occasionally come up when you invalidate from wild swinging but yes you, you, but you can play an attack from your hand that you cannot afford to force a wild swing effectively and yes normally that does essentially nothing for you um but caden because he 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 uses an EX attack. I, this probably would be templated differently to, to sets an attack in, in Modern Exceed. He gets his card draw from the EX attack, even if it doesn't, even if it's invalid. Right. That was as soon as he has set the attack. That's that's actually so sick. Uh, I hope I, you said that that's not a strategic consideration. It, uh, it is. It is because the situation is so is so niche rare. It, is so it, rare. It, yeah. Uh, put that on everyone listening to this, please put that on your, uh, exceed bingo card. Like sometime during your exceed career, please make this happen. Cause it sounds awesome. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. Emojin is able to do the same thing. Hers is scarier though, because Emojin has an, uh, an ultra that she can play that if it's invalid, uh, uh, it's got, well, she doesn't have the card draw thing, so I guess she can't do it. No, this is, this is a Caden specific thing. Okay. Uh, it, well, Emojin can do it if she knows what the card is, because she can. She can, she can know what she the can, card she is. She can stack the deck, right? But but Caden uh, can actually dig two cards deep. Yeah, yes, he can, he can get to the card below that one. Yeah, gotcha. That's fascinating. Okay, cool. Um, that's that's actually wild. I really like that. Um, I'm I'm all here for for jank plays. <laughs> the other consideration there is you have to also be careful. Uh, um. Well, no, you wouldn't have to be careful because that wouldn't happen unless you intended for it to happen. So, yeah. Right. Interesting. Okay. Uh, and then finally, uh, we, we've talked about all of uh, all of Caden's. Uh, you know, you've you've done an, an an admirable job playing Caden's advocate here. Uh, <laughs> tell me a little bit about how to beat this guy. Uh, as far as how to beat him, uh, one, uh, you have to watch out for Rising Host, but don't try to parry it. You're you'll buy yourself a little bit of time maybe right uh, it is a waste of your block um which could save you from his other heavy hitters because Caden hits hard 
uh, if you were going to parry an attack, uh, it, it, honestly, I think block is probably more useful. Uh, right. He's going to hit really hard. You need to survive. Yeah, because he has so many other options. It, because like you, you know, it's not like get rid, getting rid of get rid of fusion bane. That's his heavy hitter. Well, he has everything yes. as a heavy hitter. As many as the heavy as, hitter. As many have yeah, and you can't parry his character card. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to parry your exceed mode. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so uh, that's the a trap to not fall into. Don't try to parry this. Um. Uh. Beyond that, uh, be cautious of chain strike. Um, if you're going to, uh, I suppose, if you were going to parry something, uh, if you're like a uh, a long range zoner uh, and you really need to get rid of that chain strike, that's an option. Just be wary that if he has the other one, he can recall, he can boost with silence, uh, right. he can get it back with the after effect on double charge executioner. It, just because it's in his discard does not mean that it is gone. Uh, right. It can at least let you know where one is and there's also the notion um any of his cards including chain strike you know as long as you know where one is you know it's not exable uh, right. so that's the the other thing um beyond that uh grasp is potent at range 1 particularly if caden does not have uh any gauge available um as uh even his ex options that hit very hard except for of course you know sweep is still going to hit grasp right uh, but these two, at least, um, grasp is pretty safe. Cross is pretty safe. Just be cautious of you know once you're out of grasps and crosses. Uh, th those are essentially four different options that can beat uh, only up to four different options that Caden right. has, and he still right. has more. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but also making him whiff with with one of his big investments is is pretty backbreaking to him. It seems like like if if you right. actually can call his mix up right and and deal with it. That's that's a, a big problem for him. Yes, and that is why uh, you definitely pay attention to Caden's discard. You pay attention to everybody's discard and exceed generally, but yeah. Caden in particular, uh, because because he gives so much more information, uh, because he needs both copies of the card to make it work. Right. Uh, he he he's giving you extra information uh, in your. It's in your best interest to make as much use of that extra information as possible. Definitely. Okay, that makes sense. And then also, I mean, like. He, we've talked just now like he's got kind of bad neutral uh if your character doesn't have bad neutral you can probably make things quite uncomfortable for him while you're setting up your own game plan and your own offense yes uh especially because uh caden's caden's non-ex attacks uh that particularly when he's up close because he wants to make use of that uh you know on curve options particularly at like range yeah uh getting up in caden's face right at the start of the game tends to be uh, a bit problematic he can't right. he can't easily confirm with a chain strike anymore uh trying to have it call you at range one is more risky um grass beats all three of these Right. Uh, so you know his ultras are, are offline now. He's got normals, and he probably can't ex yet because the game just started. So right. like getting right in his face early is is problematic for him. And and even in the late game, it seems like okay, I'm I'm exceed mode Caden. I have all of my stuff online. I've got this. I mean, ex dive would be a, a particularly bad example, but even ex assault, I've got ex assault here. I'm ready to play it. I'm at range one. Uh, I want to be where this would be on or above curve to make it totally, totally safe. I don't really have any movement tools. I need to, like, Caden, Caden, even when he has his ammunition, requires some time to set up, it seems like, yeah. to really make everything be be perfectly the way he, he wants it to be to make all of this stuff work. Um, so, and that's another neutral consideration. If your opponent, if Caden's opponent doesn't have to do that, can they just kind of, like keep him from getting his way yes uh it is it, it specifically because of that reason uh if he can't get to where he wants to be um of course he can still get gauge up front uh for you know there you can do sweep and, and focus and grasp and cross it just makes it a lot harder for him to to like you're 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 not going to let him have it for free by hitting you with two chain strikes and gaining advantage and then hitting you with a habit call and then, right right you know uh you're going to make it harder for him by you boost run right into him. And now he has to be a lot more cautious. He's got to throw, he's got to throw a mix up. And even in the late game, it, it, it's specific 
specifically because his non EX special options at range one, particularly, are are aren't aren't great. Pretty, pretty bad, right? <laughs> gotcha. uh, so if he doesn't have the EX options available and is stuck at range one, he doesn't have boost to get out aside from the good old fashioned uh, assault and grasp or assault and uh, cross, right? Uh, so he's just got to fight you in neutral with just normals mostly. Uh, so he's going to have a hard time with that. Now it is worth noting as far as Caden is concerned, um, because he's already, at least in my case, uh, I'm questioning whether or not I want to do anything with this anyway. This is two force a lot of the time, right. uh, as well as because I can so easily get the other rising host. Um, this can easily be two force as well. I'm not generally worried about losing it. Uh, right. so, uh, he, it's not free movement, uh, but he can spend these to move without much loss. Right, and 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 outside of run and backstab and chain strike, and and I actually he's got some pushes. Like he he can he can get people away from him decently well. But right. outside of strikes, that's what he's got is is the move action. Yep. Okay. Interesting. All right. So and he's, so, uh, so he's he, he's. Very classic season one. He doesn't have the 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 special action compression shenanigans of the later right. seasons. He has to change cards the old fashioned way, ex the old fashioned way, and move right. the old fashioned way. <laughs> and and when and when he gets to his spot with the ex attack, uh, you know uh, the, the the sort of for people who don't know season one very well, a uh, couple things about it that are notable. Number one is is this kind of kit shape where you have some like really 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 strong options and other maybe less strong options in the same kit. But another one that is very famous is, is I, I have heard referred to as the Big Dumb Ultra, where you are at your preferred position and you just win really hard. And everything about it is just getting to that position where you win really hard. Caden doesn't have that on his ultras, but he does need to get into position to win really hard with his Big Dumb EX attack. So he just has a, an entire deck full of potential ultras all of which are position sensitive, and he needs to move to the place where those are going to work. And uh, specifically, uh, because Rising Host is also range one, two, and three, uh, he is because he's able to threaten this at all three of those ranges. Uh, that's another important factor for you know: is, is, are you getting Rising Hosted, or is it something else? Right. So, so you you wanna you want to be where your preferred EX attack and also Rising Host will be good. Um. Uh, so that you can have that mix up, you don't want to right. really be threatening something where rising host is not a is not a factor because then it's more obvious. Well, that's what I mean is is because of uh, Caden is is essentially a range one, two, and three character. Right. His range four options are essentially limited to dive, uh, and, dark tide summon, and, and chain strike. strike. Right. Okay. Uh, so um, it's it's important that it is one, two, and three, so that all of his other options are are contending with with rising hosts. So it, it's a it's a perpetual mix up. Right. Uh, because he can keep getting this one back. Right. Okay. That makes sense. And 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 in in the late game, especially, he's a range one, two to three character. In the early game, he's really like a range two to four character because he doesn't want you at range one. Uh, it depends. Um, because there's also like double charge executioner. Oh, true. Okay. Yeah. So so you, uh, which and, is particularly and, and, and uh, ex I do... attacks ex attacks even on front side at range one are still very scary. Right. Uh, this was also um uh. Caden, because Caden doesn't have a lot of movement, there are plenty of times where I'll find myself stuck in the corner. Um, and particularly, uh, you're not afraid of grasp when you're exing double charge executioner when your opponent is here and has you in the corner. Because and if they move you, they can't move you out of range enough. anymore. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, the majority of what Caden is. I don't. I'm trying to think of if I'm missing something. Uh, I believe that is the the gist of it. Uh, he he wants to uh, get gauge quick, exceed as soon as possible, uh, maintain at least one gauge at all times to threaten rising host at all times. Right. Uh, and uh, carefully, uh, like gradually, once he's already exceeded, he doesn't want to waste his time striking with non ex options. Uh, right. So if you have your turn up and you can't strike with a uh, ex option. 
uh, if it's because you don't have one, change cards until you do. Right. Uh, and then if you if it's because you're not in position, uh, go ahead and burn force uh, to get into that position or chain strike and pull them into where you want them because you get right. to choose how much you pull them. Right. And if you uh, don't have any X deck instead of changing cards, maybe you go find a specific one, but get right, one. Right. However you do. It. Uh, one one potential option. Uh, it, it requires in this case, it would require you already have one of them. Um, but if you wanted like the EX Dark Tide summon, uh, you could use like recall to go grab right. that. Yep. Um, uh, or alternatively, you could uh, um, you could theoretically secret weapon. I think it's a bit expensive to do it in that order. Uh, but there is the after effect on double charge executioner. Uh, so, for example, if you manage to do this, remember it's an after effect. So even if you don't hit, you're still going to like you know say you can. Uh, did I just? I seem to have just lost you. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that, folks. We're back. Uh, a little bit of technical difficulties. Uh, Swordplay's computer, I think, exploded. Um, <laughs> but he's back now. He survived. Um, we were we were talking just kind of last strategic considerations and counterplay swordplay. So sorry for the interruption there. Um, uh, anything else uh, you wanted to mention before we wrap it up? Getting to that uh, silence boost before I was so rudely interrupted by my computer. Yes, please. Uh, uh, being able to uh, say EX with your double charge executioner. Uh, as it's an after effect, so even if your opponent crosses away from you, for example, or grasps and pushes you out of position, uh, with the after effect, as long as you weren't stunned, of course, you can go ahead and grab your Dark Tide summon back out of your discard, and then you could boost with it. And then one of the options you have is, of course, getting back the EX double charge executioner you just whiffed with to right. threaten it again. To threaten something way scarier than the than the single copy you already had. Well, even if you even if you attempted to ex it, because this gets both copies of it out of your discard. Oh, right. Okay, so you could whiff and then get it right back again. So this is actually like like sort of recurrable offense, but it's way more expensive than Rising Host and way more situational. Well, the, with the point being that if this was already in your discard anyway, uh, right. If this was the card that you wanted to get back with your after effect, so it, it's a it's it's an option that you can get back with uh with a card um even in the middle of a strike. Right. Um, you can you can loop a thing that will let you loop a thing. Yeah, and so the point being, uh, if if you uh, you know say that you wanted to be able to recall to get an ex attack back, but both of the options were already in the discard, that's where silence comes into play. Um, right. Uh, so you can of course you can of course hit with the attack and do functionally the same thing. Um, it's just that the attack costs you your gauge, and generally you want the gauge to threaten rising host. Rising host over and over again, right? Because it's right. going to go to gauge negative. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, of course, Dark Tide Summon can hit farther and hits harder than Dark Tide or Rising Host, so it it can be worth considering as an attack as well. Notably, uh, uh, you won't get both copies, of course, because one of them will go to your gauge. But you could hit with Dark Tide Summon with an EX, and uh, no, you couldn't. You you specifically can't uh, get Dark Tide Summon itself back. Um, right, it, it's another card. Right, right. Uh, you can do that with. You can get the other one with Silence. Uh, but right. that's a you know why would you throw away a Dark Tide Summon to go get your other Dark Tide Summon? Right. Um, uh, but you can uh, use uh, double charge executioner uh, to get it back, um, unless you want specifically wanted the ex version to get uh, with recall. Uh, but it's usable as a way to get another option uh, that you wouldn't have otherwise had uh, access to because they were already in your discard. Right, and and all and all of these kind of like slightly you know janky or unintuitive or or at least tricky plays. These are the kind of things that you need to do in order to make sure that you have a steady flow of cards. Because if you don't, you're going to lose. Because your neutral is bad enough, you're not going to have your ex attack. So, like, you're looking for these edge cases in order to to make sure you have the things that you need to threaten to win the game. Just right. all of them. Because your 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 specials are are just flat out bad uh, when they're not exed. And right. your character ability, uh, notably on both sides, only has to do with the exing. So if you're not the exing attacks, you are playing a normal's no, man character. Normal's man you're, you're... with with bad specials. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so so anything that you can do to get utility out of a single card, like recurring Dark Tide Summon with your double charge executioner, all like like all of these kind of setups. That's value that you wouldn't otherwise have access to because this card is bad on its own. 
Yes. Okay. I got you. Uh, and uh, as far as uh, uh, more on fighting against Caden, uh, definitely, it, it goes without saying with, with, I think, most characters that maintaining offense, maintaining like pressure is going to be the, the more more what you want to do uh, as anytime you have your you have the ability to force your opponent to react to you is, is generally always better than trying to react to your opponent sure. um, in the case of Caden in particular because he has so much momentum that he can get with uh, once he has gotten the deck to where he wants it and is able to continuously strike uh, and uh, uh, once he has gotten his deck where he wants it he can strike to draw a card to fuel another strike uh, and then in the cases where he, you know, didn't get lucky and didn't draw the card he wanted, now he just hits you with... Did my computer freeze again? I can still hear you. Uh, okay. I think you are, you are out of the room, though. So we'll see if the, uh, if the audio uh, maintains itself. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it, may, it may be a sign that we got to wrap it up, though, unfortunately, because it seems like your, uh, your computer might be haunted. Maybe. Uh, well, that was the last, uh, the last point there was... Uh, uh, I, I lost where I was now. I can't imagine why uh, all these things happening. So we were talking. Uh, you don't have a character ability uh, when you're not exing. Uh, we're looking for ways to get um get exes or get value out of things that aren't ex to shore that up. But my my opponent aggressing into me and maintaining right. momentum in my favor is going to deny me a lot of my ability to do anything I want. Right. Uh. Because because. You, you, you don't want to, Caden is able to maintain an offensive while maintaining resources. Uh, so right. time that you spend trying to uh, set up things, Caden's just going to continue running into you if, if he has his setup done properly. All right. Okay. So, so be aggressive into him a, because you want to end the game or at least get a very good life lead early in the game to prevent it from spiraling out of control. But also the more time you're giving him, the more he's able to kind of, kind of action compress i mean resource compress into that momentum yeah it's also because uh from caden's perspective caden can't really win a boost war so if you boost against caden for example he's just going to have to strike into you and just poor man's tech his way through it because sure. he's not going to be able to win the exchange but he's also not concerned with losing the exchange necessarily because he still gets a draw card with an ex and he got that one armor for just in case uh he, he's he's not going to lose as bad right so just just hit the guy yes Okay. It, it it seems it seems like uh the the curse of of characters like Caden who are who are doing really really complicated hand manipulation strategies in order to to win the game that the counterplay to them is sometimes much simpler than what they're doing. Yes, and it is yeah. uh it, he Caden does have to put in a lot of work to get only around the same to maybe slightly better return in, in right. some cases as as it, most other characters. Meanwhile, what his opponent is doing is like Go to range one and hit him. Yes, <laughs> and then when keep when, and then keep hitting him over and over again. When you're playing your own your own wacky mini game and and you're playing against Gabrick, who's just okay. I just I want to get in your face and smack you. That's you right, know. <laughs> right. Yeah. So so you you run into you run into problems where like the mental load that you're dealing with as Caden is also higher. So you're you're struggling there too. He seems tough to play. He seems. Way, way more fun than I gave him credit for, though. I was making fun of him at the beginning of this of this lesson. Um, I would say that this is up there for uh, highest um, or, uh, l largest ex uh, largest transfer of knowledge. I have gone from knowing as little about a character as I've ever known about a character to having a pretty good idea of of what Caden is supposed to do, which I, I think means that this lesson has been a unprecedented success. Uh, well, so I, I, I am glad that I've managed to play Caden's advocate. <laughs> you did a wonderful job, Swordplay. Thank you so much for your, your time and your expertise here. Um, I would say the, the name of the show is Excess Exceed. Every episode um, is, is titled, you know, more character name than you require. Uh, never has that been more true than, than with Caden <laughs> here. Uh, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. It was a blast talking to you. Uh, audience at home, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope you learned something. Go out, try Caden. He's kind of cool, actually. He is. Uh, and everybody, I will uh, see you all for the next one. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.